Well, knock me down with a very big feather. <laughs> Who would have thought that one word would have created such an issue? <laughs> oh, Gordon Bennett. Right. Bunting in the UK is this stuff, you know, when you're having a bit of a gala day. <laughs> So if ever I use a word again that you're not familiar with in your country, ask me first or Google search it because Google is your friend. <laughs> right, OK, I'm going to show you now um, how I'm doing my bunting page. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't tell you. That's It made me laugh and, and frustrated all at the same time because you're all like, oh, I'm going to do a picture of a bird. No, it's not a bird. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's little tiny flags. <laughs> OK, right, let's get down to it. So I used one of my 12 by 12 pieces of paper. <clears throat> chopped it down height wise so it's the right height for my journal and then I folded it into three so that it it opens up like so now if you remember back in the day no a couple of videos ago I did mention or last video I did mention that this paper when folded cracks and I didn't do it to prove my point but it cracked so two things from that if your paper cracks, add some washi tape. So I'm going to add some of this washi tape on the front and the back so it'll curl round the sides on both sides. All right, so that's what I'm going to do with those. Also, because this opens up, I'm not going to be able to punch my holes in this section here because otherwise I won't be able to open it up. So what I'm going to do is I've got some black cardstock um, in my scraps bag and I'm going to add a strip of black card on the back side of this, only maybe an inch or two wide, um, and then I'll punch my holes in that black... Do you like that? Punch. That's me punch. Punching me holes in me cardstock. Um, so that's where that will then sit on the rings. So we open it up. And I um, remembered that I'd got some paper that was all to do with Britain and, you know, bunting, bunting and such like. And so I cut out a piece of that paper and stuck it on. But it wasn't wide enough to cover the edges. But I'm fine with that because I've got these straws. And I'm going to add the straws on here so I'm going to stick them in this section here where this blue spotty paper doesn't cover so that will sit on there right right on the edge and then I'm going to attach a string from one to to the to to the one and then I'll string my bunting onto that and I'm going to use some of my blue baker's twine to join the two together. Now I might have some little ribbons dangling down from off the top of the these poles as well because then it'll look like a, a real May Day type celebration. Um, and then I've chosen... These were little strips of paper that were on the front of this paper pack that I'd got. So I've cut them out and I've add, I've kept a little bit extra across the top because I'm going to fold those over and then I'll hang those on my string. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is maybe leaving these two as they are, but these three fact I'm not thinking I'm doing it I'm doing it I'm going to snip up the middle and then if I turn it over I can see the cut better on the back and then from this corner here to the top of where that's that snip is that I've just done I'm going to cut that angle off 
and then spin it round and do the same on the other end and I end up with a little flag shape right so I'm going to do that on those two leave those two as they are fold them over yeah right I'm going to go off and do a little bit do a little bit of prepping and then I'll come back and show you where I'm at righty ho I've added my washi tape onto that split edge there and I've attached one of the straws with some of the um, baker's twine attached to it now it's still a tad delicate at the minute so I'm gonna to have to be a bit careful about how I do this so I'm going to attach this straw over here and I need to work out how long my string needs to be because I want I don't want my bunting to be flat on the page I want it so that when I open this up it's hanging down oh sorry you can't see that it's hanging down there so it's just I'll hold that straw <laughs> and the twine all at the same time Carol and let me just work out roughly okay so I want it dangling a little bit a little bit swaggy almost so hmm about like that okay let me just cut off some of this excess so that when I open it up yeah that's about right okay so I need to attach this to the top of here see if I can do it without moving it and I'm going to do a double knot by going through the loop twice and then tightening up that knot One more fingers and thumbs. Okay, pull that in tight. And I want that near the top. There we go. And then I'm going to put glue on this side, which is where the straw is going to sit there and then that will sit on top of that glue so I need to just hold this in place for a bit whilst the glue takes off My bunting's all prepped so I've cut out the points and I've inked around the edges and I've drawn some faux stitching lines on the top of each of them now I had a choice of either those letters which they're pretty but I think that this is a little bit quirky so I'm going to use these letters which were by do crafts uh, alphabet stickers so I'm going to attach these so I'll put C there A I'll have that one we want that one yeah it needs to be fairly plain because that's quite busy a, and I'm putting them on at different angles I'm not just going to go all dead straight R let's have the capital R put the red on the blue R O O O O O and L. Let's have that L. Carol. There we go. And then 
on the back this bit that I folded over I've actually tapered the corners off so that when I attach them to the string they are not going to show those fold over lines so I'm going to put the one in the middle first onto the string so that I can get the positioning right and I'm just adding some glue onto the back of that flat part and then I'll overhang it and stick that down uh, oh It's a little bit like hanging the washing on the line. Ooh, just fits, just fits. Ooh. That's a relief. And then A. And C. And so, what will ha what should happen is that those will lay down like that and I will put some form of closure on the outside I haven't figured out what the closure is going to be yet and then it'll open up and my bits of bunting will then hang from from the string up there um, I might put something else on here as well so I might put rock your journal 2 on here or maybe even the date um, but you've got a rough idea now of, of the sort of thing that I was sort of contemplating doing. I'm going to go on now to show you the one that um, I'm doing for my basic timeline. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Moving swiftly on to my basic timeline. So as you can see here, I've got a plastic wallet. Now I'm keeping all of my pages in here until I'm at a point where I think that I want to attach, start to uh, punch holes and attach things. Um, I've, I'm also keeping in here any of the offcuts so um, I can utilize them on other pages, which makes it more coherent as we go through the journal, or as I go through my journal. Um, so, I've also made a note of the cover size and the page size uh, so that I don't have to keep measuring each time. So I know that my overall largest point that I can go to is six and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches long. That's the maximum that I can go to. And as I say, I can at a quick glance look at that and I know what size I have to cut my page. So I've cut my page out of that um, cheap paper pad but it was too dark and I found another paper pad with this paper in so I've cut it down and I've inked up around the edges now I'm going to put it slightly off to the side so that I can punch my holes in this part of the paper here all right another thing that I can do is I can attach this by just gluing it around three sides and then I've got a pocket then so that if I want to put an envelope in there with some photographs in then I can do or I could do it as a top loading one but a side one might have better access uh, so I'm going to do that I'm going to glue it around the three sides I think and then at least when I go through some old photographs I can add those onto journaling cards or as I say just pop them in an envelope and then that will sit 
like that. Now the other thing that I'm going to do to actually make a record of a basic timeline and what I mean by that is we're not having like hundreds and hundreds of entries um, of everything that's gone on in my life so just like as my mum says hatch matched and dispatched she always used to read that in the newspaper the hatch matched and dispatched bit I don't know why morbid fascination I think so I went through my dies and I've got this little tiny X cut envelope so I punched one out um, and I'm using this sort of goldy beigey brown colour and I've made one of the little envelopes up um, so that it looks like that and I'm going to stick these on randomly on my page and then I'll draw arrows or dotted lines from one to the next. Um, I've also got this uh, number stamp, hence mucky finger, so I've changed it to a date which I could then add underneath and then I could write on a little bit of paper something that happened within that year so I'm going to punch out a load of these envelopes I'm not going to stick them on just yet because I'm not quite sure what I want to put on on my timeline um, but I'll punch a load of these out and then as I think of things I'll add them on add the date or the year and then the other thing that I thought that I could do was use some of Mr. Tim's dolls, the paper dolls, and add those to decorate the page up a little as well. So that's all I'm going to show you on this page. You won't see this one anymore until I've actually got it completed because, as I say, I want to work out what sort of things I want to put in um, you know for specific dates and stuff but at least it gives you an idea and also the idea about the border here for punching the holes to be able to add it to the rings later on so we're going to go on to the third and the fourth prompts so i'll see you back here in a minute so i'm just going to pull my little tag out and I'm going to date stamp it for the 3rd of April. And the 3rd of April's prompt is, because it's Easter, thought we might as well do something Easterish. So it's make and Easter now this next bit I'm going to leave up to you you could do Easter eggs you could do something with regards to spring you could do an Easter bonnet which is what I'm going to put down so Easter bonnet now what you could actually do for your Easter bonnet is have a look through any maybe fashion magazines that you've got and if you've got a picture of someone's face you could then make a hat to actually go on it and decorate it up with regards to Easter uh, which is what I think I'm going to do. I also got in mind uh, Sunbonnet Sue from Patchworks so that might be a kind of an idea to use. So that's the prompt for the 3rd of April is make an Easter bonnet or eggs or something spring-like and then the next one going to date stamp this the fourth is through the window now because here in the UK we've now entered sort of spring the trees are all coming into blossom and all looking very pretty and I thought you know if you look outside of your own window 
have a look see what's going on around you maybe take some photographs uh, I've noticed that in the field on the other side of the road one of the trees has come out in the most beautiful white blossom so I might go out and take a photograph of that and actually use that and then maybe put a, a window frame on top with then the photograph underneath it I'm not quite sure yet um, but obviously spring gives us lots of lovely images uh, that we can draw on with regards to what we would see if we looked through a window now if you live in the big city it might not be quite as interesting but you might have some lovely window boxes um it doesn't have to be an actual what you're seeing through your own window uh, maybe it's something that you'd like to see through a window um that you maybe can't see through your own anyway those are the two prompts for the next two days make an easter bonnet and through the window so i hope that uh, you've been inspired by what i've shown you that i'm doing with my pages and that you have fun creating these next two prompts and i'll see you in the next video thanks ever so much for joining me again today and i'll see you all again soon bye <music>